Hello friends, I'm a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft and my aim is to empower every single person to be better at technical interviews. Keeping with that goal in mind, today we are going to do a very interesting lead code problem called flatten the binary tree to linked list problem. And if we see some of the popular companies who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Bloomberg, Uber, Goldman Sachs, ByteDance and Lyft. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem and also a very well like problem. Basically we are given the root of a binary tree and we need to flatten this tree into a single linked list. Okay. So this is the whole problem statement. Now the question is how do we actually uh, flatten it in the linked list and what are the rules for it? So the first rule is that the linked list should use the same tree node class where the right child pointer points to the next node in the list and left child pointer is always null. So what does it mean by this definition? Suppose we are given a tree or binary tree that looks like this in the example. Basically the linked list structure would look completely different. It would look something like this where all the nodes are always on the right side and nothing or, uh, or the left child is always going to be null. So it is going to be a one sided tree. Basically the second condition we are asked is that the link list should be in the same order as a pre-order traversal for any binary tree. So the question is what does a pre-order traversal means? Suppose this is the tree that we are given the input. If we want to do a pre-order traversal, the rules for pre-order traversal is basically first we iterate over the root node, then we iterate its left child and then we iterate its right child. So as long as the left child exists, we will keep going in the left direction. Once left child is no longer existent, we will go in the go for the right child and always we will first iterate the root child. If we do that, basically in this case, the pre order traversal is going to look something like this. So first we are going to iterate to the root node. So root node is one. Okay. So first we are going to visit one. Then again, left child. So left is also two. So we will visit two. Then again, left child three. So again three. Now we do not have any more nodes uh, below this one. This is null. So because this is null, now we will see that whether its root node any, had any right nodes or not. And yes, it does have a right node. So we will start visiting the right nodes again. And then we will keep on repeating the same process. So now we have visited everything on the left subtree. So now we will start iterating on the right subtree. So if we go over here, now we will visit node number five and then node number six. So this would be the pre-order traversal. Now the question is that for the given input tree, uh, what should be the answer look like? So we have to consider a couple of items uh, in order to generate the answer. First one is that it has to be the pre-order traversal and then it, it has to be like a one directional tree. Okay. So uh, keeping with both things in mind, the tree structure in the answer is going to look something like this, where the first node is going to be one and then the second node is going to be in the pre-order traversal two, but two we are going to mark it on the right side. The next one is going to be three. So again, three is also going to be marked on the right side. And if we keep on repeating the same process, basically this is the answer tree that we need to return that represents the flattened binary tree uh, that we are given as the input. So this is the binary tree and this is the linked list version of it and that this has been flattened. Uh, now in terms of like input and output, basically the input for this one is going to be something like this. So basically this is going to be the original input that we are given that represents this binary tree and after flattening it, uh, the tree is going to look like this and we need to return an output that looks like this. So basically this is the whole ask of the problem. Now let's see that what is the approach we can take. Okay, suppose this is the most basic input or most basic binary tree we are given. Now in any tree problem, what we are going to do is we will try to see that what would be the solution for this one. And then using a recursive approach, we can actually solve it for much bigger problems because that is common property in tree. If we see most basic structure of a tree, basically it has a root node. Uh, this root node currently has a left child and it also has a right child. Okay. So uh, let's mark some values so it makes sense for us to understand. So this value is one, this is two and this is three. Suppose these, this is the given tree. Now if we want to flatten this one, we will have to keep track of two items. First one is that it has to be the pre-order traversal. So pre-order traversal, we already know the value is going to be one, two and three in this order. Second thing we have to keep track of it is that it has to be a flattened version and everything in just one direction. Okay. So what does that mean? 
that structure has to look something like this where all the three nodes are just the right childs nothing on the left child keeping with these two items in mind the answer in this case is going to look something like this and notice in this case the root node remains the same this left child is come as the first right child of this root node and the right child of this root node or this node 2 uh, becomes this node 3 so basically if we just see what are the actions we did uh, in order to generate this answer first of all we took this left child and currently this left child does not have any children of its own so there is no like uh, left child over here or right child over here right but if we see in the answer currently for this left child or this node it has a right node and that right node is whatever the previous roots right child was so what we did is first of all for the existing left child we uh, had the left child dot right so right child of this original left child which was originally null because it does not have any values over here so this value was originally null we marked it as the root dot right and which we can see over here that in this case uh, this root dot right this is this right child we mark it over here okay so this is one thing we did second thing we did is in the answer currently this root dot left this left node actually has some value over here but in the, in the answer this left child is null so we will also do that so currently this root dot left is going to be null okay that is also the second thing we did what is the third thing we did the third thing we did is that currently this root dot right this value is pointing towards the right child but rather than pointing it towards the right child now we are pointing it towards the left child which we which we can see over here clearly so the third thing we are doing is that root dot right that was originally pointing towards the right pointer now it is pointing towards the left child and that's it that is the whole logic to solve this problem and how we have been able to generate this let's try to see it for a bigger version and we will keep on repeating the same process these three items so now we will try to apply these three rules for this given tree and this is the original bigger version so first of all we will recursively try to find a smaller subset we will do these three things and keep on repeating the same process until we find the full answer so first uh, if we start iterating from this root element First of all, what we can see is uh, this is one of the candidate for the left subchild where we can actually apply these three uh, rules. So let's apply that. So after applying these three rules, basically uh, for this particular portion, this two, three, and four, the answer is going to look like this two, three, and four. And if we just mark it over here, we will get a tree structure that looks like this. Now in this case, now this is the perfect candidate because we do not have a full sub subtree. So basically we have this left sub portion, we have this right sub portion, we have this root node. And again, we are going to apply the same logic. So if we apply the same logic in this case, again, second recursive, uh, second recursion, what we need to do is for this particular left node, basically we will need to see that what is the rightmost tail and the rightmost tail is four. So this four needs to point over here and this one rather than pointing to this five on the right child this needs to point over here and the left child is going to be null so this is all we need to do so if we apply these three logic basically uh, first of all we are going to have our root node one as the right child we are going to point over here rather than pointing towards this five so if we point towards this portion we will get the values two three and four and if we see currently this four is now pointing towards this value number five so that we are going to mar mark over here and basically we are going to have values five and six in this case and if we see the left portion is always going to be null for every single one of them and this is the answer we need to return i know i have not drawn this properly so let me just do it properly and this is the most simplest approach what we did is uh, we first of all try to find the solution for a smaller subset we find the base cases and the rules 
we applied those rules to a bigger case and we using recursion we are able to generate this answer and this is a very simple answer to understand if we see time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n and if we see space complexity the space complexity is also going to be big o of n because for recursion it is going to need to store some runtime set So first of all, we are going to create a helper method that we can use as our recursive method. So let's just do that. Now in this helper method, first of all, we will check that if the given node is null, we can simply return null. Second thing we can check is that if the given node is like a leaf node, which means if it does not have any left and right child, then we can simply return that node as it is. Now we will have to find the leftmost tree node for any subtree. So we will have to create a new tree node called left tail and we are going to call the recursive function again and same way we will also have to find the rightmost tail so we will also do the same thing and we will call the recursive function again now will come the meat of our logic so first of all we will check that if the left tail value is not null if it exists then we will have to put those three conditions that we discussed earlier first of all for this left tail value which means the leftmost value of any subtree we are going to mark its right child to point towards the node dot right. Then for the existing node dot right value, we are actually going to point it towards the node dot left. And in the end, the node dot left value that we currently have some value pointing towards, we are going to mark it as null. Basically, that's it. Now in the end, we need to return the right tail or the rightmost element. So we are going to check that if the right tail is equal to null then we need to return the left tail if it is not null we will return the right tail and now all we need to do is from our main method we will have to call the flattened tree method with the first root node let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions so which is great i would be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you